the idea that someone can find their career path, the right career path, the first time around, is a ridiculous notion. The, this world that we live in right now is, is uncertain. Uh, the economy is uncertain. The like, job security no longer exists. Um, the very ecology that helps and allows us to survive is in question. With all this uncertainty, it's, it makes the task of finding the right career like an absurdity. Especially if you're using the old model. The model that our parents probably perfected, which looks something like opening up the career book, finding a career, flipping to the back where it gives you directions on how to get there, and then you start marching down this path towards you know, your desired career, and this imagined endpoint of like security and retirement. This, this straight path no longer exists. It, doesn't, it just doesn't work anymore. And what I've found after trying this path many times and failing, stumbling, is that there's a new way. There's a new way that I've found. And so what I've done is I've put my trust in the design gods. So the design gods, just let me rephrase that a little bit. So the design gods to me are like Mies van der Rohe and Frank Gehry and these people that came up with design or perfected design. So let me, let me back up a little bit to explain. My dad was eight years old when the apartment block next to his blew up. It was bombed in Budapest, Hungary, 1956. And so with his parents and his dad's university diploma, uh, they made a run for the border. They bribed the guard, they escaped, and were on this new path. They escaped an erupting revolution, but were now refugees, and poor refugees with an uncertain you know, future. And so my parents tried incredibly hard, extremely hard, to find security, to find secure and stable jobs that would, that would allow um, my brother and I to not have to go through the same hardships and struggle that they did. And so, you know, skip forward a few years when, when I was 18 and I was given the, the assignment to find a career. The, you know, the kind of proven method that my parents had used um, was, was that kind of straight line to security. And, and so, you know, I didn't know my, what I wanted to really do, and I didn't really know myself, so I said, sure, I'll, let's, let's take a, let's go for it. And so I started walking down this path to security. And the first step was mechanical engineering. So what do I find? Um, I find out somewhere down the road that that mechanical engineering isn't what I kind of imagined it would be. It's more about advanced mathematics than about like school for um, inventors, which I somehow had in my mind. And so, they, and they didn't even actually let us invent anything or make anything with our hands until the fifth and final year. And by that time, it was too late, and I was on to something new. Um, I was on to grad school pursuing biomedical engineering this time, um, which seemed like a bit more of a, bit more of a, you know, a useful application of the boring math that I was learning. And, and it was a good, you know, kind of next step in this security, you know, this gateway to security. And what I didn't know at the time, but what I know now, is that I was embarking in this in this process of prototyping. I was, in essence, prototyping my career, um, going through iterations, and this was like my second iteration, which for some of you might know the design process. This is a cornerstone of the design process. You try things out, a designer comes up with lots of different ideas, tries them out to see, you know, to see how each one feels before investing whole hog into, into one idea. 
And so that's what I was doing. The, the first two rounds of this were engineering and biomedical engineering. The next step that I went on was, uh, was you know, going through grad school and figuring out what to do with that. And I slowly got enticed by the field of clinical medicine after that. Um, so I, I wanted to be a doctor. I got into this idea, I wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon. And you know, my dad's a dentist and my brother's a medical doctor, so you, know, you could say it's in the blood. When I was going through to try to become a surgeon, this is, this is a long road, this is like a massive road. It's, but it's very secure, like there's lots of, there's lots of money at the end of it, and you know, there's tons of jobs. And, and I was already, I prepared a lot and did the prep courses. And in the last step before, you know, going down the road of becoming a doctor was the med school interview. And unfortunately in the med school interview, in med school interviews, the first thing that they often ask is, so why do you want to be a doctor? And you know, I had lots of reasons for why I wanted to be a doctor, but you know, kind of the foundation of it was this security thing. Luckily, that's not, that's not why people want to accept students into medical school because they want security. And so needless to say, they didn't allow me into medical school. So that was it. I, the med school dream was over for me, which was great because I started to reframe the problem. I started for the first time thinking, rethinking what it was that I was looking for. Why was I, what was I looking for in a career? Um, and so reframing the problem this is another classic part of the design process. And this was the first glimpse that I had of these design gods, like over there in the, in the distance, these design gods giving me some some feedback. And so I was reframing the problem. What, what do I really want out of this? In the face of uncertainty, like I had no idea what to do next. So I started unpacking this idea of wanting to become a, a doctor and started thinking about it. And I, I started broadening my scope and started looking at different types of medicine, family medicine, did research in psychiatry and surgery and in rehab medicine, even started looking at in naturopathic medicine. And I actually enrolled in naturopathic medical school and was all set to go. I moved here to Toronto. And the day before school started, I was having lunch with friends, you know, talking about the weather or something. And at some point, I kind of drifted out of the conversation. And this thing kind of bubbled up within me. And it was uh, this question or this, this statement that something was telling me, like, I think I'm going to drop out of this program and get into art. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I tell my friends that. And they're very shocked. Um, you just moved here to go to school. Um, and, you know, it's a tough, tough phone call to make to your parents, like, Mom, Dad, got something to tell you. I'm going to drop out of school and explore my creative side. Um, but that's what I did. And so with, now with like absolutely no idea what to do next beyond explore my creative side, like I had no path to follow. I had no security. I had no idea what I was going to do next. It was the most illogical, irrational, like like not planned out gut decision that I've ever made. And now I, I like fully no idea what to do. And in design, that's another huge thing, is if you can become comfortable in the face of uncertainty, like that's where the magic in design really happens. While others are clamoring to find security or the known in a problem, a good trusting designer you know, steps back and embraces and thrives in the seemingly unknown. So they have a thing called trust. They trust the process. 
They trust the, the design gods that have come before them. So, so what do I do? I do kind of what any normal person would do in this situation. I enroll in a bunch of courses, like took a photography course, I start sketching, go into life drawing courses, and, and start building furniture. And I start sending out my resume because I you know, start needing, <laughs> I need to make money now. And I got a job at a budding architecture firm. And so I'm, you know, I'm, again, I'm kind of prototyping my life again. And, and doing research into myself, really trying to understand what I'm all about, what I really want out of this life. Instead of looking for some like future goal, I'm trying to understand what I want to do, what I am all about right now. And so this beautiful design process is how I now see my life. We learn this design process in school, in like the first week of design school. It's all about design process. And it, it just blew my mind. It was like, wow, this stuff is amazing. It all makes sense now. And so this, this design process, which is, again, about, about reframing the problem, about prototyping and doing in-depth research, and about trust, that's what, that's what design is all about. And that's how I was now seeing my life. You know, I used to see security in, in a career, but now I see that security is in the process. Thank you. <laughs>